So the rule with line graphs is the lines that connect the points have to make sense. This happens most often for continuous data. Uh, there are some exceptions to this. We'll look at one of those in a moment. The continuous data we deal with most typically is time, days, months, quarters, years. For example, let's imagine in this case we're looking at monthly data. Let's get more specific. So here we're plotting origination volume. So imagine you're working at a bank. This is the dollar amount of loans that are being booked in your portfolio on a monthly basis over time. And now, any time we're graphing data over time, we have a natural built-in construct for storytelling, the chronological story. So if I am communicating this information in a live setting, either in person or virtually, I could build this up piece by piece. Right, today I'm going to talk about origination volume over the course of the year. We actually started off in January, booked $100 million of loans. It's actually our strongest January ever. Over the course of the first quarter, we saw monthly increases. This was in a large part due to a mail campaign that we did. We were highlighting low interest rates and it was wildly successful. We so saw a bit of a drop off in Q2 bookings, uh, but still strong, healthy volumes. We were also down in Q3, but this is typical of this time of year. We tend to get a slowdown in this particular portfolio. But actually, we've got a strong October so far. And as we look out towards the end of the year, we've done a forecast, which you'll see with the dotted line there, we anticipate continued strong monthly momentum and a strong finish to 2020. So notice I can build things over time and tell the story, right? The context, what's going on in the environment, what we did to drive different pieces of what we see in the data. And I can do something similar for a version that gets sent around where I annotate those points directly on the graph. And that's actually one benefit we get from line graphs is that the lines themselves don't take up a ton of space, which means we've got some space left to work with where we can do some things to help add value for our audiences, such as point out interesting things that are happening in the data or context that might be important to understand as we're interpreting it. So something else that we want to consider when we're graphing data, and I'd say in particular when we're looking at data over time, but you want to consider this in general, is what frame of reference is important to have so that my audience interprets the data correctly and so that I interpret the data correctly. Here we get a little frame of reference simply from the historical data, right? We can see how monthly origination volume has varied over time. If I'm going to make one broad observation about this graph, it might be that there's been generally decreasing monthly origination volume since March. But notice how if I take a broader view at time, it actually sets some completely different context about how I interpret this data. So now I still see that decrease since March, uh, but even with that, we are way up compared to where we've been historically. Now, something else to consider when it's time you're looking at is whether and what seasonality might be coming into play and how you might make that clear. It's actually very hard to see seasonality when we look at a graph like this. So right now we're going from January 2018 at the left, forecasting out to the end of 2020 at the right. I'll just make some breaks here so you can see the annual chunks of lines. Notice we want to see where there are highs or where there are lows typically in a given part of the year, we're trying to compare things that aren't lined up. So another way to look at that can be to have an x-axis that runs from January to December, and then I can have different lines to show my annual data. Here's what 2020 looks like, back to our original graph. We can add on 2019, 2018, and now I can start to look for parts of the year that are typically low or typically high. Or this can be useful if you expect there might be seasonality going on to show that there maybe in some cases is not, can be interesting as well. 
Let's shift gears though now and say that we don't care about all of this monthly variability, that we really just wanna understand how do we look in October of this year where we're standing today versus the beginning of the year and compare that to prior years. Let's emphasize those points. So October versus January, I could draw some lines. I can compress this graph, get rid of the monthly detail, and now we have what is known as a slope graph, which is really just a fancy word for a line graph that only has two points in it. Sometimes we don't think of lines when we only have two points, but depending on our data, they can work quite well. So here we can see, for example, that the increase in monthly volume between January and October was greater in 2020 than it was in prior years. Now, this may not be the scenario for a slope graph, so let me change some of the details so we can look at some other ways and areas in which we might want to use a slope graph. So here I've changed the scenario. Now let's imagine you work at a sports retailer and you wanna understand sales across a few different categories this year versus last year. So I have last year on my left-hand side, this year on the right, and now we can quickly, easily see that uh, growth in shoe sales has outpaced growth in our other categories. I mentioned this idea before that lines are typically for continuous data, but that there are some exceptions. Let's look at one of those exceptions now, because slope graphs can also be useful at times to show group comparisons. So I'm gonna change our scenario here again. So imagine now that we're looking at some survey data. So we're still in that retail sports space, but now we're looking at relative satisfaction about our sales associates compared to sales associates across the overall company. So now I have all stores on the left and then our store on the right. And now I can focus in and see that our sales associates score higher, they outperform the average when it comes to their knowledge about our products, but underperform when it comes to relative efficiency. So slope graphs are great at really drawing our attention to where things are different. That's because diagonal things, very attention grabbing. 